So as has been previously mentioned, I am actually an SJW. At this point, I am physically incapable of experiencing any sort of art without thinking constantly about the social and political messages it's sending. That tendency has fucked up my tastes so bad that I sincerely enjoy the direct-to-video Lion King sequel better than the original Fight Me. Anyway, here's where I'm going with this. Why do I like this? Why do I like DWK's totally legit recap series? Because, like, he uses slurs for neurodivergent people and gay people basically every episode. A friend of mine actually asked me at one point how I can watch this without getting triggered into oblivion, and I honestly had no coherent answer. But later, I randomly rewatched ContraPoints' video, The Darkness, and suddenly it all made sense. Like, okay, there's this college humor video about bronies. It's actually the first video that comes up for bronies when you sort the results by view count. I thought back to this video a lot when I was starting to get into the fandom, and rewatching it now, it's mostly just dumb. Yeah, I just picked up Pinkie Pie and Twilight Sparkle to add to the collection. The collection? Why would you get that many toys before getting Twilight Sparkle and Pinkie Pie? He's getting Cheeto dust in my mane. I'm pretty sure a collector like this guy would avoid getting his stuff dirty. My face is worn down from him kissing me. Okay. Okay, I think this makes sense, actually. I think whoever wrote this episode thinks bronies play with the toys basically the same way little girls do? Like, bronies are funny. Being an adult man watching a show for little girls is funny, but whoever wrote this doesn't know what the funny things about it are. Now look at DWK. DWK knows exactly what's funny about being a brony. Oh god, dude, what the hell is this shit? What do I look like? Well, you look like a vehicle for selling knockoff monster high dolls that have less clothing, less detail, and fewer points of articulation. Wait, wh I mean, those dolls could have been great, but no, they had to make them all cheap, and they weren't even worth it to a faggot like me. What the fuck are you talking about? And maybe it's just my autism goggles, but I can't see this as anything else but the quintessential lover spat. Glimmy even throws all of Trixie's shit out of the house. People who aren't fucking don't argue like this. Right now there are people all across the internet having the same argument they're having in this episode about this episode. It's so meta I feel like I'm gonna have a psychotic break. Why, my little pony? Why do you mock me? First Zephyr Breeze, and now this shit. What did I ever do to you? I bought all your fucking merchandise. What else do you want? Do you want my soul? Take it! Just fucking take it, I don't have anything else. This, this is it. This is my darkness. Like, okay, I am bisexual. I have been called a faggot for liking men. I have heard people use the word faggot disparagingly and been legitimately hurt by it. The way some people use the word, it's like it refers to people who are gay and therefore bad and creepy and don't matter. It's like the idea of me not being a full human is baked into the definition of the word. But DWK uses the word in like half his videos and I don't think I've ever felt hurt or mad because of it. And I'm still not quite sure why? But I think a huge part of it is how self-deprecating he is. Like, when people talk shit about bronies, what words do they usually use? Faggot and retard. The way he uses these words kind of feels like he's reclaiming them. Especially since when he uses them, he's almost always referring to himself. And there's also the fact that it never sounds like he's using these words maliciously, it's always just kinda the way he talks. Like, I think saying something sucks to mean that it's bad is a little homophobic, but I still say it all the time because it's just kind of baked into my vocabulary, and I don't usually think about the homophobic origins of the phrase, and I'm often honestly not sure how else to get my ideas out. And I feel like DWK would probably say something similar about the slurs he uses. And also there's the fact that when there is actual homosexuality or mental illness in his videos, it's usually portrayed pretty sympathetically. Also there's the fact that he just makes me laugh a lot, and it's really hard for me to be mad at him when he's this funny, so I guess… actually, no. No, I… I don't think he should use these words. Getting compared to a group doesn't mean that you share the experiences of that group, and it certainly doesn't mean you get to use the slurs that people direct towards that group. And not meaning anything bad by a word doesn't necessarily make it less hurtful to other people. I actually do think Totally Legit Recap would be better if DWK would rein in the autism and faggot jokes a little bit. But like, that doesn't make this series bad overall. All of this stuff doesn't like absolve him or anything, or make it completely okay, but like, it does make it better? 
The whole point of ContraPoints' video is that you need to find a balance between edginess and social responsibility. See, if the tension collapses into pure snowflakery, you get a moralist who might say that a comedian's purpose is to promote justice by punching up, by speaking truth to power, by exposing the flaws of bigoted mindsets, and so on. And these are all very admirable goals, but they leave out what I think is the essential purpose of comedy, which is to be funny. So the opposite of the pure snowflake is the pure shit poster, who might say that a comedian's purpose is to make an audience laugh by any means necessary. But that seems kind of barbaric, since like, if a guard at a prison camp is torturing an inmate and the other guards are laughing, does that count as comedy? DWK does not strike this balance perfectly. I think he leans too far in the direction of the pure shit poster. But no one can strike that balance perfectly. That's kind of the point. DWK makes a lot of jokes about bronies being losers and about drinking too much to numb the pain of existence, and he makes a lot of suicide jokes. But his videos usually end on a relatively upbeat note. Sometimes he'll parody the episode, and sometimes he'll just make fun of it, but usually he winds up recapping the moral of the episode at the end, and he always sounds super sincere when he does it. A lot of the big things have changed, but a lot of the little stuff hasn't. Getting older helps, but some stuff, especially when it comes to family, doesn't get better until you really work on it. I think we should give that a shot, huh? Yeah, we definitely should. For all his dark jokes, I can't help but leave every one of his videos feeling like they came from a place of love towards the show and the fandom and his viewers. And between that and the fact that he never fails to make me laugh, I can never bring myself to be mad at the guy. I wouldn't blame anyone who feels differently or who's actually bothered by the stuff in these videos, but like, when the cat girls take over and the counter-revolutionaries are all shot, I hope there's still room for stuff like this.